Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We ready here? <laughs> well, a few days ago, the Lord put on my heart to speak about a daily walk. It's a daily walk that we are to walk with Him. And then yesterday, He started speaking more about the simplicity of Christ. And I realized the two go together. We are to have a daily walk, but we need to walk in the simplicity of Christ. It's not a daily walk of a long list of rules and traditions and pressures. It's a walk resting in Christ, and it's the simplicity of Christ. But we've, we've lost that somehow. We've lost it. So I want to start and talk a little bit about the simplicity to bring our understanding back. Well, what is simplicity? Our, our society is so complex. It's hard to even picture what that is or that that's even possible. Um, and I talk about our daily walk. All right? Praise God. I um, was watching some videos and uh, the people in the videos were from another nation, a mountainous area, a very poor area, and uh, they considered themselves simple village people, simple mountain people. And um, it was very interesting. The, the man interviewing them asked them some questions. And these people weren't Christian people, just so you know. They weren't Christian people. So he asked them how to be happy. And there were men, women, different ages involved. And do you know what they said? What, what, what do you think would, would happen if an interviewer took a random sampling from this nation or just from Western Christians and asked them how to be happy? The answers we might get. Well, these people don't know the Lord. Their answers, honor your father and mother. Can't be happy if you're not honoring your father and mother. Another one said, don't be greedy. Greedy people can't be happy. He said, if you're riding on your bicycle and someone passes you in a car, don't be looking at that car. Be grateful for what you have and spend your day being grateful in all that you have or you'll never be happy. They live a simple life. They're very humble. The humbleness struck me, and I've seen this in other nations as well when I've traveled, this humbleness. And the one man was speaking how he owes his mother. He must honor her. And she lived in his home with his family. And he said how when he comes home, he first goes to his mother. He checks on her. And he, he makes sure of her well-being. That's important to him. He, is, he doesn't come in and demand things that she needs to do for him because he's the man. He takes care of his mother. And it's in an honorable way. And he said, of course, I owe my wife and I owe my children. Note the language, I owe. I owe my wife. I owe my children. I must take care of them, you know. Why? That's how you're happy. That's how you're happy. And the one man said that they work as laborers. They're just simple laborers. And shouldn't we be simple laborers in the Lord? Obeying the commandments that we've been taught. Honor your father and mother. Don't be greedy, right? Humble yourself. Humble yourself. Another interesting thing they, they spoke about, maybe more the women, but also the men, was food. And they spoke about food should also be for health. When we look at food, it isn't just what to eat. It's, is this healthy? Is this a medicine for my body? Will this make me stronger? One of the older gentlemen talked about butter and he said, you know, 
the men who eat butter can work a lot harder. And they eat butter. We can get energy from that. God made butter. Praise God. And so the perspective is very different. Our perspective is often more our lusts. Well, what do I feel like eating? What do I like to eat? Never mind what it does to my body, but, you know, what fills the lust in my belly? Right? So it's very interesting. So then the interviewer asked them, where do you, where do you get wisdom? Where do you go for wisdom when you, you need an answer to something? And you think about it in our culture. Where do we go for wisdom? The internet? A textbook? You know what they said? They said, well, seek out the elders. Seek out the elders. They have experience. They have a long life. Go seek your parents. They love you, and they'll give you wisdom. Now, of course, I don't know that that's advice I can give someone in a nation that's not following the Lord. Many of the young people, they're lost. They can't seek their parents for wisdom. They weren't brought up in it. They can't even seek elders in what calls itself the church. Where is the true wisdom? Where is the true wisdom? Praise God. And what happens often is if we're not right with the Lord, we can hear wisdom from a man of God or a woman of God, but we don't hear it. And whose opinion do we follow? Our buddy at work, the guy next door, a spouse who's unsaved? We listen to them rather than a man of God or a woman of God? I think we've lost our desire for true wisdom, and we're more looking for the quick fix quick fix. Now one gentleman really had insight and he said people had commented on how he spoke and this is a man, a simple man actually later on he, he admitted he does not know how to read. This is a man living in the mountains doesn't know how to read and people notice there's something about how he speaks. And you know what he said? He said, we should be careful with words. We shouldn't have to repent of words at the end of the day. Every day reflecting what words came from my mouth today. Let me pause. Let me pause and think before I speak. What's coming out of my mouth that I won't have to repent at the end of the day? And this is not someone who knows the Lord. He's brought up in a different religion. He knows what he knows. But understand, here is a simplicity of Christ coming from a people who've never heard the gospel preached. That ought to scare some of us who were raised up in a gospel and we still don't have this in our heart because the Lord looks at the heart. The Lord looks at the heart and if these people who've never heard the gospel naturally can say, honor your father and mother, don't be greedy, humble yourself, be careful of your words that you don't have to repent of them at the end of the day. What are we doing? We've lost the simplicity of Christ, and we need to get back to it. We are not slow to speak as we ought to be. We are to be slow to speak. Praise God. But it really really touched me because what I'm seeing is more Christ coming out of people who don't know him than those who are going by his name. Those who call themselves by Christ's name have less Christ coming out of them than these people who've never heard the gospel. And God sees that. And what are we doing about it? We're still playing around. We're not taking it to heart. We're not taking it to heart. You know why? Because of pride. Because of our pride, we believe because we've been taught. I'm a Christian. I was born a Christian. Whatever. I, I said a prayer. I made a decision. However it is, we believe that we're good. And the people who haven't heard about Jesus, they're not good. We make these assumptions. It's the same assumptions 
we look back in the, in the Old Testament or in the New Testament, the Gospels, the Jews made assumptions about the Samaritans. And what did God do? He went to the Gentiles. Do we not think we're in the same boat right now? Doing the same thing, only worse? And there's a warning. In 1 Corinthians 10, there's a warning. Wherefore, let him that thinks he stands take heed lest he fall. You see, in pride, so many think they stand. But where's the simplicity of Christ? Where's the daily walk? Right? Paul speaks about the wilderness, the children of Israel in the wilderness, and all the things that happened to them. And it says, all these things happened to them for our example. And an example is an inward example. It's an inward example. It's speaking to our heart. They're written for our admonition. That's a warning. Upon whom the ends of the world are come. That's us. The warning is to us, let him who thinks he stands take heed lest he fall. Well, what were they doing that we need to worry about? They murmured. They murmured, complained. Right? What's the lesson? Be thankful for your bicycle. Stop being jealous about the car and complaining that you don't have one. It's a warning. Right? We shouldn't have to repent of our words at the end of the day. It's a warning. All the complaining, all the moaning, and the murmuring. They tempted God. What about honoring your Father in heaven? We've forgotten the simplicity. They committed fornication. They sat down to eat and drink and rose up to play. We work to play. We eat to fulfill our lusts here. And what about those mountain people? They work, they walk, and they eat for health. They live a simple life. The children of Israel lusted after evil things. And do we think, if we're not looking at physical food, is this for my health? How are we looking at spiritual food? Understand, all things are spiritual. And what spiritual food are we taking into our body? Are we looking at it and saying, this is not good for my health? My spiritual health, I'm not taking it in whether it be a movie or music or a conversation with an ungodly individual or thoughts that the devil's putting in our mind that we're mulling over all night long or words coming out of our own mouth. Praise God. So how is it that we can go out by his name and not reveal him when there are others who by nature are revealing things of Christ whom they don't know. And another, an, an, another thing that was said right out of scripture, it's amazing, because I know these people have never read a Bible. The truth never stays hidden. You reap what you sow. And this is a daily principle in their lives daily principle. But that, wait a minute, God gave us that as a daily principle to live by. Why are we not living by it? But they are. Something's gone wrong. We received a letter from the pastor in Africa. This is another country. These, these were people were, were over in the Middle East. And uh, another pastor from Africa he says, we have realized we need to focus on God's promises and be strong in faith. Simplicity of Christ. And God is blessing those people there. They are getting touched. They're getting healed. They're breaking down in tears before the Lord. They're rejoicing. What are we doing here? I met so many humble people from Asia, all over the world. Humble. I met a man once in Vietnam who was out riding a bicycle with a seat on the front. And he was looking for a big fat westerner who was visiting off their cruise ship 
to ride around to see the sights of his city for a dollar. For a dollar. And this man was very small. And I said, I don't need to see the sights, but I'm, I'm going to pay you for your time. I want to talk to you. Because I was curious. And uh, he basically said, well, he, for a dollar, he can feed his family. So he's willing to ride someone three times his weight, at least twice his weight, but probably three times his weight, around on a bicycle in the heat of the day so he could have a dollar because he can feed his family. He's a humble man. How many would do that in this nation? Or would they rather go steal something or kill someone for a loaf of bread? Or kill their own family because they can't support them? We've lost the simplicity. We have too many distractions, I think. My God. My God. So it's time to start our daily walk. It is a daily walk. It isn't once a week get ready and show up at a building called a church. It's a daily walk. And it needs to be a daily spiritual walk. Not just, well, God's with me every day and I'm doing my thing. No, it's a daily spiritual walk. Have we even been taught how to walk spiritually? Do we know how to walk spiritually? We need to learn. Lord was showing me I've been doing some cleaning and uh, had a, a blender I pulled out, had been sitting in the back somewhere in a closet for a while, had a nice layer of dust on it. So I'm cleaning the dust off, and the Lord showed me, you know, when things sit idle, they collect dust. Well, yeah, we know that. Furniture, will co anything will collect dust if it sits there for a while, if you're not cleaning it, right? If we just sat in an easy chair all day long, week after week, we'd probably collect dust too. But we're made out of the dust. Our flesh comes from the dust. So what happens when we're just sitting around spiritually, not walking every day? That spiritual exercise, walking with the Lord. We collect dust. We gather more flesh to ourselves. Just because we're not doing what we ought to be doing spiritually. We need to daily walk with the Lord. Praise God. This is a time right now when a lot of people want to know future events. They want to know what's coming so they can prepare. And the focus is way down the road on what's coming. They want to hear a prophecy. They want the Lord to tell them what's coming so they can prepare. Where's the daily walk? They neglect the daily walk. And it's the daily walk that prepares us. Knowing future events does not prepare us. Whether we know them or not, the daily walk will prepare us if we're walking in it. Right? We need to take up our cross daily. And that is the preparation for whatever is coming. You want to know how to prepare? Take up your cross daily. And walk with the Lord. And attend to spiritual matters. Return to the simplicity that is Christ. And let go of of all this dust that's been collecting because we've been neglecting our spiritual walk. Isaiah 29, 13. Then the Lord said, Because this people draw near with their words and honor me with their lip service, but they remove their hearts far from me, and their reverence for me consists of tradition learned by wrote. How true is that for the most part in Western Christianity? Now that may be true in other religions as well, but in Western Christianity we look at that. What have we been taught? Memorization. Learn it by rote. This is the tradition and this is what we do and this is how we do it. No moving of the Holy Spirit. No take up your cross and follow me. Right? And therefore what we have is a head knowledge and we think that by having the head knowledge we're good and those who don't have it are not good. And we're wrong because we are lacking the personal heart knowledge of the Lord. 
And we're not walking in the simplicity of Christ. We are walking in the vanity of our own mind and our own intellect. See, many say they're close to God, but those are words. Where is the heart? You see, the trials and the tribulations we go through reveal the heart. And in the heat of the battle, we'll see it. In the heat of the battle, when we're under pressure, will we reveal Christ or will we reveal something else in our heart? That's the test. Well, how can this be? I'm a Christian. How can something other than Christ come out of me? We may have learned of him. We may have memorized scripture. But it never made it in our heart. It never became a reality. Christ is not in here. Our mental knowledge allows us to speak of him. But without the message getting deep in our hearts, we are merely paying him lip service. And God is not pleased. He's warning us. We need a daily preparation of the heart at this time. It is a daily preparation, and it is an inward preparation. It's not doing more things out there for God. It is a daily preparation, inwardly, time before the Lord in prayer, time in the Word. Let the Lord work in us, speak to us. And working through these daily trials that come up, when we recognize that's not Christ coming out of me, what do we do with it? Do we seek the Lord? Or do we say, well, that's just how I am, and collect more dust? The psalmist knew this. Psalm 86.3, Be merciful unto me, O Lord, for I cry unto thee daily. He recognized the need for a daily walk with the Lord, a daily cleansing. So let us cry out to him daily. Right? If we sense something welling up in our heart, a situation's going on, and we haven't sinned yet, but something's coming up in our heart that's not Christ, and we recognize it, cry out to him rather than express the ungodliness of an unclean heart. Is that so hard? Something's going on, we're riding our bicycle and that car drives by and I want to start complaining. Why don't I have a car? That man's not even godly. Or we can say, Lord help me, Lord help me. Not to be greedy, not to be covetous. Lord help me to have a thankful heart. We have a choice and it makes a difference. It makes a difference. Cry out to the one who can cleanse and transform our heart. We shouldn't have these things in our heart, but we do. We're in a corrupt society. Lot was vexed because of his time in Sodom and Gomorrah. We don't have to speak out everything that's in us. We can cry out to God instead and have our heart transformed. There's two ways to get relief. Speak it all out and vomit all our nastiness on someone else. Or cry out to God and have our heart transformed that Christ may come out of us next time it happens. Because it will happen again. We'll be tested again and again. Mark 7 verses 21 to 23. For from within... Out of the heart of men proceed evil thoughts, adulteries, fornications, murders, thefts, covetousness, wickedness, deceit, lasciviousness, and evil eye, blasphemy, pride, foolishness. All these evil things come from within and defile the man. They ought not to be there. God didn't create us that way, but they're there. We're born of a fallen race, and they're there. 
and it's our choice. What do we do about it? In our daily walk, what do we do about it? In our trials and tribulations, what do we do about it? 2 Timothy 2.22, flee also youthful lusts, but follow righteousness, faith, charity, peace, with them that call on the Lord out of a pure heart. There's the simplicity of Christ. We're having trouble, call on the Lord out of a pure heart. Don't take it in our own hands and go do something wicked. 1 Timothy 1.5 Now the end of the commandment is charity out of a pure heart, and of a good conscience, and faith unfeigned. It's not fake. It's real, but the only way to get that real, that pure heart, is by crying out to God when we recognize my heart is not pure, and allowing the Holy Spirit to come and transform our hearts that we might be pure in His image. And then we can cry out. We need to seek Him daily. This is a daily work. God doesn't do it all at once. I was raised up believing you live the best life however you can, and when you die, because you believe Jesus existed, Somehow you're perfected on your way to heaven. But it's not true. It's walked out day after day after day. It's a daily walk. And where are we walking? Are we going upward or are we going downward in our day-to-day -day walk? Spiritually speaking. Are we growing in Christ or are we losing Him? Every day, every decision. What are we doing? We need to seek Him daily. We think we don't? Let me tell you something. The devil seeks to destroy us daily. The devil comes and lies to us daily. Why are we not seeking the Lord daily? Psalms 56, 2. My enemies would daily swallow me up, for they be many that fight against me, O thou most high. That's right. Things come against us every day. We need to be seeking the Lord. Not complaining about them not gossiping about them, not taking matters into our own hands and bursting out in anger or violence. We need to be seeking the Lord. And who's an enemy? The enemy can be anyone that the devil wants to work through. It can be anyone. It can be our own flesh. And what's the purpose? To keep us from Christ, to keep us out of the way. And an enemy can attack in many ways. We need to be wise of the ways of the devil. We can be tried in many ways. And God knows every single way. And he's not going to use the way you want. Right? He knows what's in our heart and he knows how to get at it. So God will customize the trial personally for each one to get at what is in our heart, to bring it to the surface. We can hide it and hide it all we want deep in our heart. We can say nothing and be quiet and let everybody wonder what's going on and there's something in our heart. God is going to get at it. He will put the right pressure in the right place at the right time for the right duration and that thing is going to come out. If it's in there, it will come out. And we have a choice. Seek God daily before it comes out or let it come out, repent of it, and seek God. Or just grow in the flesh and spiral downward. That's our choice. What's in our heart is going to come out. What is that the one gentleman said? The, oh, I can't find it. Somewhere. That it will come out. Whatever it is, it's going to come out. We reap what we sow, right? The truth never stays hidden. So the question is, is our heart pure? It's not pure, but I can hide it. No, you can't. No, you can't. And not in this time. Because God has moved to deal with hearts at this time. He is dealing with hearts. And the, if you wonder why the pressure is getting harder right now, it's because God is going inward and He's dealing with the hearts right now. And He's going to deal with the hearts. Why is He dealing with the hearts? Because He is separating the people, those who are 
daily walking with him and growing in Christ and on that upward spiral that pastor has preached about, he is separating them unto Christ. And those who are not, who are on that downward spiral, he is separating them away. Even within a family, within a church body, even within a marriage, both must be walking daily with Christ. And if one is not, there's going to be a separation. In a family, if all, as a family, are not walking daily with Christ, there's going to be a separation. And the scripture tells us there will be. Why are we surprised? We're at that time now. It isn't some time in the future. It's time now. And that's why the pressure is going to get greater and greater and greater. Because God's dealing with the hearts. How long can we withstand him? Why not turn before it gets to that point and get that thing cleansed out? Praise God. And walk in the simplicity of Christ. Hallelujah. Because it's going to be a daily walk. There's going to be daily trials. And that means there's daily opportunities to grow in Christ. If we're just sitting around waiting for God to do something, sitting around waiting to grow in Christ, we're collecting dust like that blender. It has to be a daily pressing in to seek His face and recognizing these opportunities when they come up. Something's coming up in our heart. I need to seek the Lord and get that fixed before that thing comes out of my mouth. Before that thing translates into physical action. And we have daily opportunities to exhibit Christ. Are we striving for the simplicity of Christ in our daily activities? Are we striving to have careful words that we don't have to repent of any words in the evening? Are we striving not to be lusting after things that other people have, not to be covetous, not to be greedy, but to be thankful for all that we have, while we have it, even if it's taken away, thankful for the time we had it. What is in our hearts? Praise God. You know, the trials and tribulations are designed to bring out what's in the heart, and God knows what's in the heart. So if we're wondering why that annoying person, we just can't get away from them, that annoying guy in the office, or that annoying family member who keeps coming over unannounced to visit. God has them there for a reason. He might be testing what's in your heart. He might be training you to grow more in Christ. Just realize it is not an annoying person to complain about. It is an opportunity to be transformed in your heart regardless of whether that person continues to be annoying or finds the Lord. And it's our choice, right? I know many of you know there was a woman here who daily, for months, months, was downright mean to me. Extremely difficult to be around. And finally I asked God, why is she here? And he very quickly responded, to teach you long-suffering. It was a training was a training. And when I learned it, she left. Get your heart right. These situations will clear up faster. Doesn't mean they won't come around again to test you. See if your heart's still right. But I encourage you, get your heart right. Sometimes it takes months. We're hard, hard hearted people. But it's a daily walk. And that means daily trials, daily tests, daily tribulations, daily attacks. And through it all, we have the daily opportunities to reach out to Christ and have our hearts transformed just a little bit more today into His image as we climb Mount Zion spiritually. Right? The more our hearts are transformed, this is why I'm saying, don't be looking to, if I knew the future event I could prepare. No, it's the daily walk. It, the more our hearts are transformed now by our daily walk, the better we will be able to stand in the day of adversity, whatever that adversity is. Right? Praise God. Psalm 13, 2. How long shall I take counsel in my soul? 
having sorrow in my heart daily. How long shall my enemy be exalted over me? You know, the children of Israel were, were in Egypt for, what, 400 years? But God allows it for a reason. He has a purpose. He is working in our hearts. Whatever it is, if we think something's unfair, why is this person exalted over me? God's working something in our heart. And a lot of times it's humbleness. He's training us in humility and submissiveness. Because that's Christ. Christ was submissive to the will of the Father. How are we not submissive? Psalms 42.10 As with a sword in my bones, my enemies reproach me, while they say daily unto me, Where is thy God? You know, has the devil ever told you that? When you're under attack, a lot of things going wrong and you're praying and you just see things are just getting worse, things are difficult, they're not resolving. Has the devil whispered to you, where is your God? Don't believe him. God's right there. And God knows he might be training you. He might be trying to grow deeper roots in your heart. He might be trying to get at that thing that you won't let go of. And you won't allow him to transform something deep in your heart. And we're so hard-hearted, he has to really squash us to get to it. We've hidden it so deep. But there's healing if we let the Lord touch us. There's healing. Stop holding out on the Lord. And stop listening to the devil. In all affliction... All affliction, the answer is always cry out to him daily. Even if it's going on for months, cry out to him daily. It will resolve. It's for a time. When the God's perfect work is worked in our heart, it will resolve. Be encouraged. If our goal is to grow in Christ. We listen to the devil, we get caught in a snare, right? Every day we have a choice. Do I fall in the pit? Do I get taken in the snare? Do I listen to the devil? Do I listen to my flesh and give in to my lust? Or do I cry out to the Lord and stand on His word regardless of my circumstances? It's our daily choice. And where are we? In pits, in snares, listening to lies of the devil, not able to hear the Lord, not seeking Him daily. That's where we're at. Psalm 88, 9, Mine eye mourns by reason of affliction. Lord, I have called daily upon thee. I have stretched out my hands unto thee. You see, this is the sinner that will be heard of the Lord. This is the one, Psalm 88, 9. The daily walk helps us to remain in obedience to God. Not just grow in Christ, but to remain and not get backslidden or sidetracked. And it allows us to delight in Him as we're transformed by His righteousness. We're transformed by the power of the Holy Spirit coming into our hearts. And you see, this is on a personal level, but this is also the way of a righteous nation. Right? A daily walk delighting in the Lord. That's a righteous nation. And if we seek to become a righteous nation, we must start with a daily personal walk with the Lord. Isaiah 58, 2, Yet they seek me daily and delight to know my ways as a nation that did righteousness and forsook not the ordinance of their God. They ask me of the ordinance of justice. They take delight in approaching to God. See, if we delight in approaching Him, there's no problem with a daily walk. Right? This is a righteous nation. They do not forsake the ordinances of God. But how many are actually walking in them? The simple people who've never heard the gospel. We're to daily offer Christ to the Lord. It is the daily sacrifice. We have to let go of this flesh. 
And the more our hearts have been transformed, the more Christ is revealing us and the more we have to offer. Right? He gave us Christ. We must give him Christ. Praise God. I'm almost finished. I have a few more verses. Remember the Bereans? They received the word with all readiness of mind and searched the scriptures daily whether those things were so. When the devil's lying to us, when we hear something, do we search the scriptures daily? Do we seek the face of the Lord daily to see if that's so? Is this true? Before we fall into a pit of believing a lie? There's a lot of lies out there. A lot of them. And we can ask the Lord to cleanse us. Cleanse our hearts of any lies that we were taught. That we don't even know our lies. The devil can be very tricky. You know. Praise God. And we look at the church in Acts. Acts 2.46. And they continuing daily with one accord in the temple. And breaking bread from house to house. Did eat their meat with gladness and singleness of heart. They were rejoicing daily in one accord. Are we walking daily in accordance with Him? In accordance with the body? As a body, are we walking daily with Him? The body must walk with Him daily. Otherwise, it's just vanity. It's just lip service. And God's not receiving that. And it's not preparing us for what's coming. Praise God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Would you stand, please? Thank you, Lord. So it's a simple message tonight. It's a simple message that this must be a daily walk with Christ. And we must learn to walk in the simplicity of Christ. And how do we get there? By recognizing what is not of God and choosing to seek His face and allowing the Holy Spirit to transform our hearts. Praise God. That we come to delight in our time with the Lord daily. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Before it's too late, we've been warned. Oh my God, we've been warned. But who can hear? Who can hear? How many, how many of those out in the wilderness heard? They perished in the wilderness for the most part. Will we too perish? Praise God. If you'd like prayer, feel free to come forward if you want, would like to have some prayer.